Ah, space. Perhaps no other destination has captured our imagination more than the seemingly endless cosmos. Yet until a few decades ago, space travel was nothing more than science fiction. Problem was, once we had seen the moon, planets, and stars, we yearned to reach them. Since the launch of the first modern rocket, space travel has propelled technical and scientific advancements. For more than 25 years, the space shuttle has made major contributions in areas of astronomy, engineering, life sciences, and medical research. Since its first launch in 1981, hundreds of men and women have traveled into space aboard the shuttle. Earlier developments in rocket technology made this possible. Perhaps as early as AD 300, the Chinese began experimenting with ingredients intended for medicinal purposes. When they blended charcoal with sulfur and potassium nitrate over fire, they accidentally invented gunpowder. They put it to use in making a rocket. In the late 1600s, Isaac Newton explained the fundamental principle of rocket motion. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When air rushes out of a balloon, for example, the opposite reaction propels the balloon forward. In 1926, American scientist Robert Goddard constructed and successfully tested the first rocket using liquid fuel. Today, he is known as the father of modern rocketry. German engineer Werner von Braun reached another milestone in rocketry with the invention of the V-2 ballistic missile. Used by Nazi Germany to bomb cities in Europe during World War II, the powerful thrust of the V-2 made it a forerunner of modern rockets. After the war, von Braun helped build the American space program. In 1957, the Soviet Union successfully launched a satellite into orbit. This event initiated an obsession in the United States with space travel, which began the space race between the two countries. In 1961, the Soviets stunned the world again when the first human traveled into space in a rocket. A few weeks later, the United States launched astronaut Alan Shepard into space. His flight aboard the Mercury Freedom 7 capsule lasted 15 minutes. We set sail on this new sea. President Kennedy was determined that the United States would be the first to land an astronaut on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Apollo 11 launched in 1969, rocketing astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Edwin Buzz Aldrin to the moon. Two of the astronauts actually walked on its surface. It was the first time any human walked on a celestial body other than Earth. Still riding high on the success of the moonwalk, NASA announced their next grand vision, a manned voyage to Mars. As a first step, they needed a space plane that could push four and a half million pounds into an orbit 150 miles high, that could maneuver and sustain its crew for a couple of weeks in the harsh environment of space, and one that could survive the fiery re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and be reused on repeat missions. What they needed was the space shuttle. For launch, the shuttle is attached to a massive external fuel tank. Flanking the fuel tank are two solid rocket boosters, or SRBs. Each booster is a 150-foot-long tube of solid fuel. The SRBs provide 80% of the force required to lift the 4.5 million pound shuttle off the launch pad. Three 
three huge engines lift the vehicle into orbit. Two other engines help it maneuver once it's in space. The aft fuselage, or the rear section of the shuttle, houses the energy for the return trip to Earth. When the shuttle takes off, power turbo pumps draw liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen through these propellant lines. These two liquid fuels, maintained at hundreds of degrees below zero, are forced together in a combustion chamber where they explode to produce 394,000 pounds of thrust, or forward force. To prevent heat-related damage to the engine, it is frozen by liquid hydrogen flowing all around it. The shuttle performs different tasks depending on the mission. Transporting satellites into orbit, servicing and helping to build the International Space Station, and conducting scientific experiments. New, more efficient spacecraft called crew exploration vehicles are being developed to replace the space shuttle. The first of these is the Orion capsule, which is scheduled to launch in 2014. Orion is similar to the older Apollo model, but it's larger, more versatile, and more technologically advanced. NASA plans to use the Orion to transport humans to the moon and eventually to Mars. As part of their design plans, engineers are working to manage the costs of each launch. It costs more than $350 million every time the shuttle goes into space. The space shuttle has paved the way for many possibilities, including space tourism. A few wealthy tourists have already experienced space, but the danger and expense of such travel prohibits any industry from emerging just yet. With the new and improved space exploration vehicles preparing to take off, space vacations may be in our future. And colonies on the moon may one day become a reality.